guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am go pony today we are in the new 2020 nissan murano courtesy of hanover nissan in hanover pennsylvania quite excited to be in this one above average reliability ratings by consumer reports also a very good looking suv in my opinion so what do you say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as expected there will be several different trim levels available for the 2020 Nissan Murano, first one being the S, starting at $31,530, SV for $35,160, SL for $39,630, and lastly, the Platinum, the one we are in today, starting at $43,730. And so that was actually all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those, simply add $1,600 to any of those prices. And so regardless, Regardless of trim level on the Murano, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 260 horsepower available at 6,000 RPM, 240 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM, again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT, giving you a zero to 60 time approximately 7.3 seconds, which is pretty respectable for its class. And MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 28 on the highway and so before we do any kind of accelerations I did want to mention there is a manual shift mode all you need to do to use that is just simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left and it's actually going to tell you what gear you were in on the digital portion of the gauge setup and I'll get more into the gauges later of course but to actually shift through these simulated gears all you need to do is slide the shifter up and down but again it is a CVT so it's still kind of simulated shifts but that's there for if you wanted to do some engine braking perhaps. But now I think it is time, you guys. What do you say? Let's do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Nissan Murano up to speed. All right, little bit of a rolling start here, but here we go. Huh. Interesting. All right, this is kind of interesting. All right, but acceleration is perfectly fine. It's an NAV6. You're not gonna have any issues there, but it is a CVT, but it sounded like it was simulated shifts. That was kind of cool. I mean, as far as CVTs go, I know CVTs are torn up quite a bit because they're uh, kind of emotionless, to be honest, but this CVT did kind of simulate shifts. So that was kind of cool. If you're gonna have a CVT, this one's not bad as far as the simulated shifting goes at least. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.1 inch rear discs as far as the braking feel goes. I'll say it's a little softer of a braking feel than I'm used to, but certainly not bad. It's not like, uh, like the Chevy Tahoe that's sitting in front of me right now. That's a very, very soft braking feel, a little delay there too. But with the Murano, it does bring you to quite a nice stop, but it is a little softer of a braking feel probably than I'm used to in the class, I should say. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front, you will find an independent strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. Of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as the ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. So you're definitely not gonna have any issues there. Steering feel is yeah, pretty much as expected. I will say it's kind of on the heavier side compared to a lot of other SUVs in its class. Um, not as heavy as like a Mazda MX-5, for instance, but definitely heavier than a Hyundai Santa Fe. So it's kind of right smack dab in the middle and it is quite a nice steering feel to it. I gotta be honest. And as far as cabin noise goes, that is another thing that is very much so on point. It's probably one of the first things I noticed. It is an extremely quiet cabin, almost to the point where you could call this an infinity Murano because it is that quiet. And of course I got the top trim level and the interior quality is absolutely amazing. And I'll get more into that later, but really a very quiet cabin. So that is on point. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. You're definitely not gonna have any issues there, but that about rounds up the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Nissan Murano. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2020 Nissan Murano. Definitely a good looking SUV, but let's go ahead and start up front here. To the sides, LED headlights will come standard on all trim levels, and of course, they will come with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED signature daytime running lights coming standard as well and LED fog lights down below coming standard with the SL and platinum trim levels and they will actually be optional 
on the SV. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one. Black roof rails will come standard with the SV trim level. However, you will find silver roof rails for the SL and platinum trim levels there. Of course, you got the floating roof line near the back, which is kind of less evident with the black exterior, but it is there. Chrome window surrounds will come standard along with chrome door handles just below that. Rear privacy glass coming standard once again across the board. And when it comes to the side mirrors, they will be body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard with integrated turn signals for every single trim level so that is definitely a plus as well and if you wanted heated side mirrors for cold climates like Pennsylvania where we are simply go with the SV trim level and up but so then taking a step back here taking a look at the wheels 18 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys will come with the S and SV trim levels 20 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloy wheels coming with the SL and platinum trim levels but now Let's go ahead and make our way to the back on this one. Up top, you can find that shark fin antenna, of course, just behind that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just behind that rear window wiper, of course, all of that coming standard on all trim levels. And you will actually get LED tail lights coming standard on all trim levels as well. So that is definitely a plus. It's definitely a safety feature. People are less inclined to run into you from behind when you have brighter lights, of course. Just below it all, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So I do believe you guys know it we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back still, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob, so simply press that if you like. Also a button by the driver's side left knee, that is yet another option. And I should mention, there is a motion activated lift gate if you were to go with the SL or Platinum, and the way that one works is you simply walk up to the Murano, swing your foot underneath the bottom of that rear bumper, and the Murano's lift gate will simply open up for you. So it is hands-free if you have your hands full, so that's definitely a plus as well. Once opened up, cargo capacity behind that second row comes in at 32.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, you can fold those rear seats down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 67 cubic feet. Did want to mention there are cargo area levers to fold down those rear seats as well, and they are located in the cargo area, so definitely makes folding them down a little bit easier than, than otherwise. Also back there, there are eight cargo tie-down hooks. There's also a spare tire underneath of the cargo floor there as well a little bit of storage space you can probably store some stuff down there but nonetheless making our way to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 38.7 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there do want to mention rear ventilation coming standard for all trim levels that's definitely nice also rear center armrest with cup holders for this rear passengers rear seats actually do recline as well so a little added comfort there too and you can actually find heated rear seats if you were to go with the SL or Platinum trim levels. Then make your way up to the front seats. Cloth seating can be found with the S and SV trim levels. Leather seating with the SL, L meaning leather of course. And you will actually get diamond quilted leather seating if you were to go with the Platinum. And of course that is currently what you were looking at right now. Manually adjustable seats will come with the S. You will get a 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the SV trim level and up. And you will actually get a 4-way power adjustable passenger seat again with that SV trim level and up. Heated front seats will come with the SL and you can find heated and ventilated front seats if you were to go with the platinum trim level. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable for the Platinum. It will come leather wrapped for the SV trim level and up and heated for the SL and Platinum trim levels. And by the way, that button is located once again, just by the driver's left knee there. Now making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have all of your buttons located on one side of the key. Nissan logo at the top, lock, unlock, button to pop the rear hatch and that circular button just below the Nissan logo there. That is your remote start and that is going to come standard for the SV trim level and up. Nonetheless though, all trim levels will still get a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is just simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee or just in front of the shifter really. But once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounting controls on the left side. There is a ton of different things you can check out. It's a digital speedometer if you wanted it. There's your radio information, 
compass, trip A, trip B, average miles per gallon, some safety features, tire pressure, when you need your next oil change, the list really goes on. So we're just gonna leave it at that. But taking a look at overall interior quality, this dual panel panoramic moonroof that you're currently looking at is going to come standard with the platinum trim level only. Dual zone climate control coming standard on all trim levels though. Homelink controls for the SV trim level and up. Ambient lighting for the SL and platinum trim levels. And like I was previously mentioning to you guys, interior quality is definitely on point. I love the contrast leather with the black and the light color. That is definitely looking quite nice. Also wood trim is going to be found all over this thing. There is wood trim on the doors. It goes just above the uh, passenger side glove box at the very top there. It kind of ties into the center ventilation there of course it continues into the back as well and is found all around the shifter here and the uh, heated and ventilated seat buttons as well so definitely a very nice finish there's an overhead sunglass holder on the roof there I don't want to forget to mention that there's also a Pennsylvania turnpike ticket holder up on the sun visor there and of course it's really any ticket holder if you go through tolls so that's definitely a plus as well so you don't have it flapping around on the sun visor you do have several charging ports just in front of the shifter USB charging port auxiliary port there's a standard phone charging port 12 volt power outlet so a ton of hookups there is a little cargo space just behind that dual cup holders once again more wood trim found on the center armrest here when you open that up another 12 volt power outlet along with of course a ton of storage so definitely a very nice finish to the Nissan Murano but now let's take a look at the tech display front and center eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard for all trim levels this includes Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay factory navigation system coming standard on all trim levels as well you can of course check out your radio information up there too and when it comes to the sound system you will find six speakers with the S and SV trim levels however for the SL and platinum trim levels you will get an 11 speaker Bose sound system with dual subwoofers so I do think you guys know what we have to do next let's turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning here and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Definitely a good sound system, a very nice sound system. I feel like I say this in all my videos, whenever there is a Bose sound system, they're perfect. And I've had one in my old Infiniti G35, it never failed me. So definitely a very crystal clear sound system with the Bose sound system that we have today at least. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Murano in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you. But you will also get a 360 degree monitor if you go with the SL or platinum trim levels. So that's even better that's gonna let you know what's in front of you to the sides everything so you don't hit anybody or anything which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags will come standard of course driver and passenger knee airbags though as well it doesn't come standard on every vehicle out there in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks but also standard is going to be automatic emergency braking forward collision warning and a driver attention monitor so it's kind of gonna let you know when you start to get drowsy so that's always a plus and if you go with the SV trim level and up you will in addition to that get adaptive cruise control which actually is new for the SV trim level for 2020 also rear parking sensors also new for the SV trim level for 2020 high beam assist lane keep assist and emergency braking with pedestrian detection then lastly if you go with the SL or platinum trim levels that will in addition to that add traffic sign recognition and that 360 degree monitor I just mentioned to you guys. All right, so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Final thoughts on the Murano. Definitely very impressed with the interior quality of this one. Perhaps it's because I got the top trim level, the platinum, but still, nonetheless, I love the quilted leather. That's something you usually find in luxury brands like Audi, so that's definitely a plus. The wood trim is a nice touch as well. Homelink controls, this is a very luxurious vehicle. The power plant paired up to the Murano is definitely on point. There's nothing wrong with an NAV6 and an SUV like this. Perhaps the only thing I personally would change is still the CVTs are never going to do it for me, I feel like. And if Nissan just changes their CVTs to an automatic or a DCT setup, they would do absolutely amazing. But still, the CVT isn't bad. It's just a little emotionless. But overall, a very solid pick when it comes to the Murano. But 
that about rounds out this one you guys feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold